Good day. It's June 10th, 2024 in Las Vegas, USA. Another of former President Trump's ally and advisor is going to prison. I'm Sam Buban. Welcome to The Pulse. And I'm Joe Buban. Welcome to this week's edition of The Pulse. Steve Bannon, who was once arrested for financial fraud in connection with the fraudulent solicitation from MAGA donors to fund a wall in the southern border with Mexico, but was pardoned by then-President Trump, was ordered by Judge Carl Nichols to report to prison by July 1st of this year to serve a four-month sentence. Bannon was found guilty of contempt of Congress and was sentenced to prison in October 2022, but the sentence was put on hold as Bannon appealed his case to a higher court. But last week, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals rejected his appeal. Steve Bannon was found guilty of consistently refusing and defying the subpoena of January 6 Committee of Congress who was investigating the January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Bannon joins the many former Trump officials and allies who are now convicted and serving prison sentences. Among them is Peter Navarro, who appealed all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court for his conviction of contempt of Congress for willfully defying the J6 Committee. Peter Navarro is currently serving in a Florida federal prison. In Las Vegas, the Filipino-American community held several annual events in the past two weeks. FASAI, or better known as the Philam Civic Action International, held its annual Mother's Day Gala event that coincided with their biannual induction of officers, where a new set of officers will serve in the organization for the next two years. Ernie Buo, a civil engineer, is the new president of the organization, and Bing Wong Gakit, a CPA who will serve as vice president, and Dr. Philip Palaracio will remain as the executive director. Judge Joseph Cicinto, in an unofficial capacity, sworn in the new officers as requested by the organization. Judge Cynthia Cruz graced the event as their keynote speaker. Also, the Cavite Association of Nevada celebrated the annual Philippine Independence Day Dinner Gala to commemorate the Philippine independence of 1898, which was the first publicly proclaimed in Kawit Cavite. Ruel Rodriguez, the event chair, and the president, Dodgy Carrillo, led the Cavitenos in the traditional Las Vegas celebration. Both events were attended by a large cross-section of the Phil Am community, and several public officials were there. Last week, uh, we mentioned to our viewers that there were 20 seats held by Democrats in the U.S. Senate that are up for re-election. At least two of those Democratic senators had switched their label to independent, like Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona and Senator Joe Munchin of West Virginia. We are going to look at some of the surveys and polling data. In California, distinguished uh, and intensely competitive race for U.S. Senate Democrat Representative Adam Schiff of uh, Glendale Burbank and Republican Steve Garvey will be the competitors in the November general election. The seats, which was formerly held by Senator Dianne Feinstein, Schiff, uh, the congressman from Burbank, was the front runner of most of the time. However, the latest Berkeley IGS poll released March 1st showed Garvey in a statistical tie with Schiff. The poll found Garvey the choice of 27% of likely voters, while Schiff received the backing of 25%. In Michigan, last Wednesday, in a survey by Mitchell Research, Elisa Slatkin's lead has narrowed from 40% to 36% against Mike Rogers to 36% to 33%. Both candidates have dropped uh, support from their base with Slotkin's lead among Democrats, going from 84% to 7% and 75% for Rogers. 
Rogers now leading 32% to 30, while he trailed with Independent two weeks ago at 32 and 27%. What about Arizona? In a recent survey by the Cook Political Report, Ruben Gallego, the congressman from Arizona, takes the lead of 46.4% while his challenger for the Senate race, Carrie Lake, in the Republican Party is down by 39.8%. Lake will take a fighting stance with Mark Lamb and Beth Rye in the July 30th GOP primary. The winner will likely face Gallego in November 5th, 2024 general election. Republicans control the state Senate by the 16 to 4 margin, but the U.S. Senate is still controlled by the Democrats. In a recent survey by the Survey USA, Democratic incumbent U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota leads Republican Navy veteran and banker Joe Fraser by 14 points today in her bid for the fourth term down slightly from 17 points at least from last month. In all of the other surveys uh, in the Minnesota uh, Senate race, Klobuchar is still uh, up by s several margins from the challenger. We are going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we will be joined here at the studios by Deputy Public Defender Marla Renteria, who is running for judge in Henderson Justice Court Department 1 as our guest interviewee. Please stay tuned. Mambuhai, I am Christian Bishop, candidate for Nevada State Senate in Henderson. As a father to three children, family means everything to me. That's why your family means a lot to me. As a small business owner, I know what it's like to sacrifice, build, and persevere. Protecting our community, investing in our future, and leading with empathy and foresight to make the right decisions for all Nevadans. In addition to being the sports, gaming, and hospitality capital of the world, let's be number one for healthcare and education. I'm Christian Bishop, and I approve this message. Salama po. Welcome back to The Pulse. With us now here at Film TV Studios is Marla Renteria, who will be talking to us uh, on this interview segment. Marla, welcome to The Pulse. Thank you so much for having me. It's our pleasure. Uh, please tell our audience about yourself uh, before we go into some questions. So, my name is Marla Renteria. I am born and raised in Reno, Nevada. I moved down to Las Vegas back in 20, 2008, excuse me, when I went to law school. I actually, when I moved here, I moved here with my son. He was three years old. That's when I made the decision to go to law school because wow. I knew I needed to provide a better life for him. Um, I've been living in Henderson now for, uh, I actually moved to Henderson in 2010 when he was going to start school. And I have been living and working in, um, in my community. I've been a public defender now for over a decade. Oh, um, and yes. I am now seeking this position to run for Henderson Justice Court Department 1. Um, the biggest reason I'm seeking is to give back to my community. I think we lack representation on the bench. Yes. I think it's important that we have people who care about the safety of our community, but that also care about the rights and dignity of our neighbors. And so that's the biggest reason I've decided to run at this time. Well, I'm glad you're running. You're, you're an, a Nevada native. I am. <laughs> you were born here. So what kind of cases are usually brought to the Henderson Justice Court Department 1? So Henderson Justice Court actually handles criminal cases. Misdemeanors primarily are the cases that get adjudicated as far as the criminal mm -hmm. matters. They also handle the initial hearings for felony and gross misdemeanor cases, mm -hmm. determinations of probable cause. We also handle small claims, yes. um, civil litigation with the loss amount of $15,000 or less, evictions, uh, traffic matters, 
I'm trying to remember if I caught everything, and temporary protective order okay. um, cases. So it's a wide variety of cases, but primarily in the, um, those are those are the things. I might have missed a thing or two, but that's yeah. where we're at. It's good to know. We're educating ourselves here, Joe. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So uh, this is an open seat during this election brought about by the departure of Clark County Judge Sam Bateman. How many of you are vying for this seat and what made you join the contest? So I actually have five opponents. So in addition to me, there are six five. people running for this seat. Again, the biggest reason that I put my name in and I was one mm -hmm. of the last to file is because um, I think I bring a different perspective to the court that a lot of other people do not. I am the only person of color that is running in this race. I am is the only right? public defender running in this case. So I've dedicated my life to representing the people, Yes. Um, to representing indigent people, a lot of people that I think our community forgets and wants to throw away. And I want to be very clear, when I talk about representing um, indigent people or people who cannot afford yes. an attorney, a lot of those are the working poor. We're not talking right, about, right. everyone wants to talk about homeless people. Exactly. These are a lot of people who hold steady jobs, 40 hours a week, you know, but they just can't make ends meet, which is why they qualify for a public attorney. I think it is important that the bench represents our community, that our bench actually cares about the people that are coming before it. Yes, consequences have to be imposed, and, yes. and, and those types of things have to happen, but we have to care about the human beings that are appearing before us in court, particularly because in justice court, a lot of the individuals who will appear there will actually not be entitled to court-appointed counsel or representation. So it's very important that you have a fair judge who is mindful of the human beings that are appearing before them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's why it's good to have uh, <coughs> people uh, from public defender's office, uh, you know, trying to run uh, for judgeship because uh, it's, it's like, a, the job is community-based, you know, the more you know about the community, you know. So, uh, one of your strong opponents in the race is uh, Sandra Already Giacomo, uh, a career prosecutor. Which side do you stand on the individualized hearings for bail, as in the Valdez Jimenez uh, ruling? So, the Valdez Jimenez ruling, interesting enough, was actually done uh, through casework done by mm -hmm. other people in my office. Um, it's something I am very, um, how do I, uh, I support very much. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can make determinations. People are not numbers. Yes. People are people. There's individual <coughs> issues with regards to accusations that are made against them and individual circumstances mm -hmm. that must be taken into account so that we are carefully crafting release conditions for, remember, these are for people yes. who have not yet been found guilty of anything. <coughs> Marla, we're almost out of time for this segment. Uh, this is an, uh, your opportunity to talk to the voters, especially in the film uh, community. What would you like to tell them? This is your pitch. So the one thing I do want to say is I'm not a politician, so I apologize mm -hmm. that I don't have just some canned speech. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, is this, I'm running for this position because I care about my community. Yes. I care about the people <laughs> in my community. I care about the safety of our community, but I also care about primarily the dignity of the human beings that will appear before me every day. A lot of times, a litigant who comes into court who feels seen, heard, and understood is more willing to accept whatever ruling is made by the court, even if that ruling is contrary to their position. Confidence in the judicial system is extremely important, particularly at this very beginning level. It's the where most of our community members are going to first encounter the justice system and if they don't believe in that they're not going to believe in anything else going forward so i truly believe i'm the candidate that is most qualified for this position i have the most wide array of um, experience i highly encourage you to vote for me for henderson justice court department one and quite frankly we will make history because i will be the first latina elected to that bench i will be the first person of color elected if i if i succeed Marla Renteria, Deputy Public Defender, running for Henderson Justice Court Department 1. Thank you for talking to us today here at the polls. Good luck on your race. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me here. It's our pleasure. When we come back, we will be joined by Hanadi Nadim, candidate for Nevada State Assembly District 34. Please stay with us. Pure 
Medical Equipment provides top-notch quality medical supply equipment. Whether to rent or buy, Pure Medical Equipment and Supplies has it all. Pure Medical Equipment is committed to serve and give back to Southern Nevada. We deliver medical supplies and rentals to your door. With us now at the PhilM TV studios is Hanadi Nadim, Nevada State Assembly District 34 candidate. Ms. Nadim, welcome to the polls. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. And thank you, Sam, for inviting me. It's, it's an pleasure. honor for me. Thank you so much. Oh, it's our, our pleasure. <laughs> so tell us about yourself, uh, Ms. Ha Nadim. My name is Hanadi Nadim. I'm running for Assembly District 34. Uh, since my childhood, from the very beginning of my life, I had a passion to serve the community. When I was a um, student, a high school student, mm -hmm. I, start, I started working for the special children. I started an organization with the name of Save God Special Children. And with the help of my friends, my family, my colleagues, we started mm -hmm. raising funds and giving, started giving them vocational and educational training. With this, when I come towards the healthcare side, I saw that we need, the people need so much help. They need help regarding their insurance. They need help regarding finding a good doctor. Uh, there are so many things that need to be fixed in healthcare, mm -hmm. starting from the patient care to the provider satisfaction. I was always thinking about it, and I was like, how that can be fixed? Mm -hmm. Though much, much has been done during the democratic era, but still, there's a lot needs to be done. Then when I came to Las Vegas, it's been many years back, 20, more than 20 years back, I saw that the educational system in Las Vegas is very poor. It really, really needs to be improved. Thank you. The incumbent on District 34 is uh, Shannon Dilbray yeah. Axelrod, who is not uh, running for the same seat. Are you the only... Uh, Democratic candidate in the primary yes. for that seat. Yes. So uh, basically, yes. You, you're already, you know, your uh, your name would already be in the November uh, ballot. Yes. And uh, Hanadi already mentioned many of these things. But Joe, uh, you want to ask her something else? Uh, yes. So, what are among the policy or issues you want to bring up for your district and the state of Nevada if you are elected to the assembly? Uh, Joe, thank you for asking that question. This is the one of the most important things why we are here, why I decided to run. Like I said, there's so many important things that need to be addressed and need to be done. One of the most important thing, one of uh, that is the top priority, my top priority yes. is healthcare. Yes. Healthcare. Because yeah. healthcare is it is fundamental right of every individual to get a good health care. Mm -hmm. Yes. If we are worried about our health and we cannot find a good doctor, or the doctor is not, uh, there's a shortage of doctors, the doctors are overworked, the doctor needs to, uh, you know, they need to be, get paid properly, the insurance is giving problem to the doctor or to the patient. There's so many things that needs to be fixed. So Ms. Hanadi, you're, you're, you're talking about like a, a more uh, funding for uh, educating patients, more funding um, state funding for like uh, emergency room or urgent care um, that uh, has to be addressed uh, in the state assembly, you know. Because yes. it, 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 as, as it goes, you said that if people don't know where to go, okay, yes. so there had to be more, you know, public um, announcement or education yes. about our, our patient care system. And also that may also actually require more funding from the state that the state, the state legislature can, you know, uh, has to address uh, to fund more, uh, more money for the urgent care uh, clinics, um, emergency rooms, because so there are many also that are not insured, that is correct, although uh, there has been an expansion of the Obamacare, what they call the Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act, you know, 
So that's that's a good thing. If you are elected, uh, are you planning to be like in the and the Health and Human Services Committee in the Assembly? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Sam, definitely. Um, I would uh, love to be, um, uh, how I can help, Healthy. if I can help in these uh, committees. Uh, it's uh, good for the public. I would love to do that. Uh, beside the urgent care, also we need more quality physicians in Nepal. Mm -hmm. That is, that's, I'm definitely going to advocate yes. more education for the patient, better insurance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have seen that, I tell you, Joe and Sam, during the, the democratic time, there's always a lot of insurance coverage for the patients. Mm -hmm. Yes. We start from Obamacare. People were against, some people were opposing it, but I tell you, Obamacare is such an important thing till yes. now, right? <laughs> till yes. now, it is really helping the homeless people, the people who cannot afford. The low income people. Yes, yeah. low income people who cannot, but you and I know how expensive is, in, is the insurance, right? Yes. And those who have given Medicaid, it's a blessing for them. Right. right. I know many who so, have benefited right, from it. Right. Yeah. And definitely we want to expand it to all of it. And this is for why I am here. This is the only reason why Democrats are here, to help the people. Yes. Okay. We're almost out of time for uh, this segment, uh, Ms. Nadim. Uh, what would you like to say our voters uh, you know, out there? This is your pitch. Thank you so much for yeah. giving me the opportunity. My name is Hanadi Nadeem and uh, my and I'm running for Assembly District 34. Uh, I'm, I'm running. I want to give this message to my voters. Um, I'm running because of you. I am passionate about improving and the healthcare, the education system, the safety laws, as um, affordable housing in our beautiful state of Nevada. Please reach out to me. Please let me know how I can help you. I am here uh, to listen to you and uh, you can find my information. You can take my information on uh, uh, from Joe and uh, Sam. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing from most of you and looking forward to meet you all too. Ms. Nadim, candidate for Nevada State Assembly, District 34. Thank you for your time to talk to us today and good luck on your race. Thank you so much, Joe, and thank you so much, Sam. It's an honor for me to be here and um, giving my interview. I'm really humbled and honored. It's a great opportunity and I look forward to it too. Thank you so much. Me too. Thank you, um, Ms. Nadim. When we come back after the break, we will do a brief update on the Gaza-Israel situation. Stay with us. Pure Medical Equipment provides top-notch quality medical supply equipment. Whether to rent or buy, Pure Medical Equipment and Supplies has it all. Pure Medical Equipment is committed to serve and give back to Southern Nevada. We deliver medical supplies and rentals to your door. Welcome back to The Pulse. Now for updates on what's happening in Gaza, in Israel. As Israel attacks over a million people escaped Rafah, as over one million Palestinians escaped Israel's attack on Rafah, the United Nations Palestine Refugee Agency said on June 1st, 2024, that it has ceased offering medical assistance in the city. If Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu approves a ceasefire agreement, far-right ministers Smutrich and Ben Gavir threaten to dissolve the cabinet. With the announcement that Hamas views President Joe Biden's proposal as for ceasefire positively, expectations are raised that Israel's eight-month conflict, which claimed nearly 100 lives in the past 24 hours, 
would come to an end. It's time to end this war, U.S. President Joe Biden said in reference to the latest proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza, calling it a roadmap to an enduring ceasefire and the release of all hostages. On June 2nd, days after Israeli three-week operation came to a close, rescuers discovered 50 additional bodies from Jabalia refugee camp. Well, thank you folks for watching our uh, this week's edition. I'm Sam Buban. And I'm Joe Buban. Thank you for watching this week's edition of The Polls. God bless your week. Enjoy Film TV Network on KGNG 26.8 Las Vegas and www.filmtv.us. Search for and download Phil M TV Network in Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Facebook, and YouTube. Download the WCE TV app from smartphones and search for Film TV.